Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe on this channel. We post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy our weekly content. We've got a podcast called Diving in Funny and Jesse. And head to iTunes, Spotify, iPod, in this channel, or our second YouTube channel to listen and watch. And we've got a Patreon account. Feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. So today I'm going to be reacting to Friday the 13th. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth chapter of the Quran, verse number 103, Allah Ta'ala mentioned ما جعل من بحيرة ولا سائبة ولا وصيلة ولا هام ولكن ولكن الذين كفروا يفترون على الله الكذب The translation of this ayat is that Allah Ta'ala has not made the Bihira, the Sa'iba, the Wasila, and the Ham. He has not made that part of the religion. None of that is true. I don't want to go into the details of the tafsir of this ayat. I want you to go back and check it out for yourself. Research it for yourself. Ayat number 103. Today is Friday, and today is the greatest day of the week, as the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, خَيْرُ يَوْمْ تَلَعَتْ فِيهِ الشَّمْسِ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ The best day that the sun came out is on Friday, يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ the Muslim should be connected to the Quran, especially on this day, reading Surah Al-Kaf and so forth and so on. This particular ayat from Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayat number 103, is talking about some of the khurafat that the non-Muslims of Quraysh came up with before Prophet Muhammad was sent to them, sallallahu alayhi wa as a prophet and a messenger. It has to do with the animals that were born, an animal that was a twin to another animal and it sh shared the same womb with another animal. The non-Muslims of Quraysh used to come up with crazy ideas and crazy concepts that constituted for them what was their religion or part of their religion. So this ayat is dealing with the khurafat, the superstition, the craziness, the concepts that don't even make sense that Quraysh used to have. So in our religion, the Quran came to knock the brains out of concepts that don't make sense, to knock the brains out of ideas that are superstitious. Since I've been giving dawah, especially here in the UK, I've shared with the UK audience a phrase that I grew up saying from when I was just a little kid, and that is hocus pocus. Islam, there's no room for the hocus pocus Islam. That's that Islam where people are doing things, saying things, believing things that have absolutely nothing to do with the religion and they have nothing to do with even common sense at all. So in our religion, Allah in the Quran dispelled all of the khurafat that Quraysh used to have as well as the khurafat of the non-Muslims as well, the Jews and the Christians. When the Christians said that Isa was the son of Allah and the Jews said Uzair was the son of Allah, that's hocus pocus, has nothing to do with the price of peanuts, has nothing to do with proofs. It's just a mere claim that doesn't even make sense. The story of Ibrahim in the Quran when he took the ax and he broke all of the idols and he left the big idol. And when the people came and said, who broke our idols? He said, hey, ask the big one if he can speak. They said, you know that he can't speak. Ibrahim said, that's the point. 
That's the Quran dealing with hocus pocus, things that have nothing to do with reality and things that people believe in, they do, they say, that don't even make sense. So as the Imam and one of the people giving dawah here at Green Lane Masjid, I wanted to take this opportunity to give advice to our community. And I wanted to say that the cornerstone of our religion is the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Tawheed of Allah is absolutely 1000% against hocus pocus because hocus pocus and 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 and, and khurafat it leads to shirk and kufr this stuff leads to shirk and kufr disbelief some of the non muslims during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his dawa they had idols at the kaaba one of them they had an idol that was made out of dates the owner, the owner of the sunam of the idol, he got a bunch of dates and he put together his God, something that he's going to worship. And I think some of you are aware of what happened a few weeks ago where there was a man. He could have been from India, Sri Lanka, something Asian man. He made a doll, an image of Donald Trump, and he was worshiping Donald Trump. And that man has died since. That's Allah al-Afi wa salama. Who in his right mind would do something like that? So I wanted to say that, brothers and sisters, to say we can't be like the people that Allah mentioned in the Quran. Women and nasi main yujadilu fillahi bi ghayli ilmin wala hudam wala kitabim munir. From the people of those people who argue. They argue about Allah, about the deen about Allah and his deen, they want to argue and they don't have any knowledge, they don't have any guidance, and they don't have any book that makes things clear, but they want to argue. We can't be like them. Another ayah said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ There are those people who worship Allah and they don't know what in the world are they doing. So I wanted to say this, growing up in America, I grew up with the culture that's been created by Hollywood, like everybody else. I used to watch that stuff. I used to believe in that stuff. I was affected by that stuff before I became a Muslim. But then after becoming a Muslim, alhamdulillah, you get a high level of liberation from that hocus pocus khurafat way of existence. So I used to believe in what I want to talk about today. And that is tomorrow, inshallah, is Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th. There are some Muslims who become, they become anxious, trepidation sets in, they get nervous because it's Friday the 13th. And they believe in the khurafat and the hocus pocus that Hollywood came up with concerning the movie Friday the 13th and concerning the main character in that movie. The number 13 is a bad, unlucky number and if it fell on the day of friday then we have double trouble and then we have muslims who believe that muslims who govern their lives after that muslims who they may not believe in it as such but on that night they're going to snuggle up to the tv and they're going to watch friday the 13th the movie they're going to watch halloween we just finished with halloween the other day i'm walking up my street in spark hill to go to Stratford Road, and lo and behold, there's a mother who's spending quality time with her children. But what's the quality time? They were making the pumpkins, the lanterns, where they took out the insides of the pumpkin and they put candles inside of the pumpkin because Halloween was going to be that night. Halloween, that was the other day. When I saw it, I was going to give some dawah, but I didn't want to say anything and disrespect the family. It was the mother and her younger children, so I just kept walking. But I went home and I mentioned it to my family. Can you believe Muslims who were born in the Muslim lands knew nothing about Halloween, nothing about this khurafat? We come, we live in America and the UK, 
and we become assimilationist. What they do, we do. Although we have in our religion, lakum dinukum waliyadin. You have your way, your religion, and we have our way, our religion. And our way and our religion doesn't allow us to buy into, not to mention participating in any of this khurafat. I don't know if you brothers and sisters are aware of this, but the scholars of Islam have not left any stone unturned. There is a book that has been written in Al-Islam, a science called the science of Al-A'dad, or Al-A'dad, the science of numbers, where the scholar will write a book in which he'll mention every single number that has been mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. And the text accompanying that number so that the Muslim would know the significance of the number in his religion, in his daily life. So the number one, the number two, three, four, five, six, seven, all of those numbers have been mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. Inna Allah witr, wa yuhibbu witr. Allah is odd, one, and he loves the odd numbers. So for that reason, some people, when they eat dates, they like to stop on one date, three date, five date, seven dates, and four, so on, so on. Two, 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 two. The number two, Salat al-Fajr. The Sunnah Fajr is two rakats. And on and on. The number three, Salat al Maghrib is three rakat. And on and on and on. Salat al Four. And there are so many things. Five arkan of Al Islam. Five prayers in Al Islam. The number six, you get the picture. The number seven, you get the pigeon. The picture, seven samawat, seven heavens, and seven earths. Yomul Qiyama. The number eight. Because this is a game that I actually like to play with my children, where each child comes up with a number, but they have to know what is the delil and what is the proof from the Quran and the Sunnah that gives support and give credence to that number. You just can't make up a number, the number 60,525. One of the kids say, what did this religion say about that? No, you're disqualified if you don't know the delil. So in our religion, Numbers have been mentioned. So the number eight, if someone would ask you, what in our religion has to do with the number eight? Someone may scratch his head, especially our youngsters, the number eight, the number eight, the number eight. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَيَحْبِرُوا عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذَنْ ثَمَانِيَةً Yom al Qiyamah, there will be eight angels that will carry over their heads the arsh of their Lord. Be eight of them. So, my point is the numbers of Islam have been explained. The number 13, Friday the 13th. The number 13 has been mentioned in our religion as being something positive. The number 13 is the beginning of the white days of every month. We fast the 13th, 14th, and the 15th. How is it possible that the Muslim is going to come now and change that number 13 and put negative connotations to it because non-Muslims in Hollywood came up with it. Non-Muslims in Bollywood and Nollywood are perpetuating the kedit, the lie, the myth. This is not okay. This is not okay. So I want to say to our community members, especially the youngsters from amongst you, and also you parents who don't want to be too rough on your children, and I'm all for that. Don't be too rough. Don't be too tough. But there is a level as parents that we have to take, that we have to say, no, we're not going to allow that in our house. We're not going to allow you to practice that. And that's the meaning of the instruction of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ya ayyuhallidhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Oh, you believe, save yourselves and save your families from the hellfire. Brothers and sisters in Al Islam, Friday the 13th has nothing to do with our religion, and it is not a reason and a cause for a Muslim to be nervous, afraid, or anything of that nature at all. And it is not permissible in our religion for a Muslim to be a practitioner of this stuff. He cannot send his kids out to ask for trick or treat and he himself cannot accommodate kids when they come and they give them candy and sweets. This is not permissible. So I wanna to say to you, 
tomorrow being Friday the 13th and the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian is Friday the 13th in November. In November. It's not even our calendar. But as it relates to the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, tomorrow, Friday the 13th, has nothing to do with the price of peanuts. If anything, we're going to look at the day, inshallah, with a positive outlook. And we're going to send salutations upon the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, read Surah al kaf We're going to pray and do salats. Even if we don't go to the masjid, we're going to do the things that we normally do that are from our religion on Friday. As for the hocus pocus Islam, this is something that should be avoided. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very interesting video. Um, I, I always say this when it comes to events. Ask yourself what it's all about before you go out there to celebrate. Because some of you don't even get the meanings of this. Other than that, there are also dangers to... Um, there are dangers. People, children are out there gallivanting their neighborhoods. If someone um, with a bad heart or with bad intentions will be there and they could be adopted or something. A lot of crazy things go on. I don't know much about Halloween. Like I said, I don't celebrate it. But of course, TV, the media has showed us that people celebrate. And when you look at the way Halloween was before, it was all about wearing maybe some of the scariest masks out there. What are we masking ourselves against? Why are we masking in the first place? And then now, now people are dressing like Beyonce. Yes, that's a good thing to them. Now people are dressing like um, all sorts of things, which is, I don't even know. It's really up to you. Don't just celebrate things blindly. Otherwise, this was a very good message. I hope you guys enjoyed it as I did. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.